Now it's time for the second piece in this week's Parsha Akir. Focusing on the same first verse. V'haya ekiv tishmu'um. And it will be on account of your understanding. It is said in the Midrash, what, what is the law in Israel of man who has a lamp that separates into parts? May he carry it on the Shabbat? We have a candelabrum or something, something, uh, a vessel for holding oil, burning oil, making light. In the old days, they used oil, they didn't use electricity. Most of you are aware of that. Um, and it may, maybe the lamp was had different sections that were screwed together. Can you carry it on Shabbat? Our rabbis taught us that if he assembles it, he is liable for the prohibition of building on Shabbat. So, what is the point of this law being taught precisely here? In, in Breshit Rabbah, we learned this law in Parshat Ekev. The matter is this. Carrying such a lamp was prohibited on Shabbat on the suspicion that it might be building. In other words, it's all it's loosely screwed together. But for even if the branches were loosely joined together, branches of this candelabra loosely joined together, the sages feared that the motion of carrying them might strengthen them somehow. It's moving around and it, it, it comes together a little more. And even that little bit would be one of the 39 prohibited forms of work on the Shabbos. And then he would be building, unaware of he would be doing an inadvertent sin. Since there is no precise measurement given to how much a person needs to build in order to be liable for building, then even the smallest amount of building is forbidden. And with this, it's, an, it's impossible to be precise. So in other words, if I'm liable for even the smallest amount, then it's it's impossible to be precise and say only this amount or a larger amount, any amount. So, so the, consequently, the sages said, we just don't carry such a lamp on Shabbat. Also, if, if it's impossible to be precise, I mean, if only the smallest amount of building is put to make some man liable for building, then then you'd say that, you know, God is holding us to an impossible law. One may, God forbid, accuse God may be blessed of being a tyrant with his creation, giving commandments that are impossible for us to perform. Therefore, the Midrash follows immediately with, right after saying this law about the lamp and how how you can't carry it in Shabbat because it might be building. The Midrash continues by saying, how did Israel keep Shabbat when it was first given to them in a place called Alush, where it says the nation rested on the seventh day in the 16th chapter of Shmos? Perhaps they would say that for your detriment, the Shabbat was given to you. And truly, it was only given to you for our good and our benefit. This was in order to show that even the fulfillment of the mitzvot is in the hands of God. The Meshulov teaches us that everything is in the hands of God, based on the Gemara. And the Meshulov has this famous twist on the Gemara where he says that everything is in the hands of heaven except for the fear of heaven is only from man's point of view. In other words, the way the Talmud says everything is coming from heaven, whether some one person is tall or short, whether a person is rich or poor, it's all determined from heaven except for the fear of heaven. In other words, if man has free choice in order to, to do the mitzvot 
I choose to be God-fearing or the opposite. It's a choice. It's not God is not determining my um, decision to fear God and fulfill the mitzvahs. To love God and to fear God is up to me. Right? The Mashallah puts a twist on it and says everything's in the fear of heaven, even the choices God gives us. But this is beyond man's understanding. This is not a kind of knowledge that a man can suffer. We have to live in the world of free choice. But in the deepest, deepest, deepest level, even our choices come from God. That's something that's hidden from man and hidden from you too. So this was so all of so again to recapitulate that the we might think God is being tyrannical with this with with us in giving us the mitzvot that seem are seemingly impossible to perform, meaning that even the smallest amount of building and then how can we carry the lamp? And because you're walking along, and it would be, we'd be doing a, a sin when we just, we're just walking along with a lamp in the back. So, and then right afterwards it says, how did Israel keep the Shabbat when it was first given in Alash? And it says the nation rested on the seventh day, first Shabbos. Perhaps they would say it's for your detriment that God gave you the Shabbos. And it was actually given to you for your for your own good, for your great for the greatest benefit. So this was in order to show that even the fulfillment of the mitzvot is in the hands of God, for He gives man the power that he needs to. God gives man the power to fulfill the mitzvot. In the frail mortal intellect, it is impossible to understand how Israel kept the first Shabbos with all of its details. It, it, they were new. They didn't. How could they know all of the details right away? to which they were completely unaccustomed. And they were they had been immersed in slavery and all they were completely unaccustomed to Shabbos and all of a sudden in Alish, boom, Shabbos, all of the details. All of Israel did not transgress even the smallest detail of the laws of Shabbos on that first Shabbos. And the verse testifies to this. And this proof this is proof positive that Hashem may be blessed completes us and prepares all of our actions for our own good. This is, and it will be, because you surely hearkened. V'haya ekev tishmu'un. Ekev, and it will be. Ekev, again, like ekev means at the end. It will be at the end. Why? Ekev is the heel, which signifies the end. So it says, and it will be, at the end, God sees all of Israel went after his holy desires. 